I have built a lot of clocks, wall clocks, mantel clocks, table clocks, hanging clocks, all sorts of different styles of clocks, but I have never purchased a clock face. I've always designed and drawn my own. And so I'm going to do a quick little video here on sort of the step-by-step -step process of drawing your own clock face. It's a lot of fun. It's part of the whole kind of fun of building a clock is to build a face that kind of goes with the character of the clock. I'm going to concentrate on this face because this is a clock I've built lots of and sold them over the years on Etsy and eBay and stuff like that. It's a face I like. It seems to go with this clock. This is what it looks like and here's the process for building it. The whole face building process really starts with an array of lines, array of lines that are six degrees apart from each other. If you take 360 degrees and divide it by 60 minutes, that's six degrees per minute. So I build this array and it's something I keep as a block because you'll use the same array for every clock face you build. So I draw a vertical line, I draw four more at six degree increments. I make the one in the middle a little bit fatter because it's gonna be on the minute. It's gonna be, for instance, in this case on the 12. And then the next four lines are 1201, two, three, and four. And then at the one, you need another dark line. So you make this first six lines, five lines, then copy that and copy it and paste it at now your six times five. So now that you're 30 degrees, take those five lines, space them at 30 degrees, make 11 copies of that. And of course, SketchUp does this very quickly. And there's your array. That's going to be helpful now for every shape of face that you build, that array. So I keep that as a block. I make a group out of it, and I use it to make every clock face. So here now is the clock face that we're going to work on. You've got to work now on the, uh, the frame or the, the time ring of that clock. And so here is that shape that we started out with in that little table clock. And I'm just carving that out with lines. I'm using the uh, offset tool in SketchUp to make an inner ring. I've spaced those about, oh, uh, somewhat bigger than a quarter of an inch apart from each other. I find the center of this because this is where you're gonna have to drill a hole for your clock movement and now I have the time ring of that clock. Once I've got that all I have to do now is place that over the array and uh, I'll show you how that works. You just grab it in the center with the move command, place it in the center of that array and then explode that group, that uh, frame or whatever you want to call that outline. Explode that group. Explode the group that is the array. Uh, intersect all those intersections. And then you simply grab the eraser and you erase everything you don't want. Oops, got to explode that one more time. I guess I had that kind of double deep. So I explode that now, I grab my eraser, I erase all the parts I don't want, and SketchUp will, you know, nicely save the stuff that's between the lines. And so it's a quick fix. You erase all this stuff you don't want, and you've got now this time ring with accurately placed minutes and accurately placed uh, 12 numerals. And that spacing, because a clock's a clock and it works in a circle, is always going to be accurate 
for that particular shape of clock. Now, as I said, this array works with any shape of clock because uh, the reliability of six degrees per minute is the same no matter what the shape is. So here's, for instance, a very tall rectangular clock, which I've made some of these, where you have your numerals pretty much stacked up on the sides. Again, this is how that would look. Or a square clock, where you have three numerals on each of the four sides. That's how that time ring would look. Here's a round clock, very conventional. But again, you need this time ring. You need to have your minutes and your numerals spaced for you, and so there's a round one. Even an odd-shaped time ring like this arched one, with that array, you get all of your minutes in the proper location. Now what I usually do is import some kind of a gradient for a background. I put that behind the uh, time ring that I've made, and I start erasing the solids in between to expose the gradient underneath. So you can see here I'm just erasing all the white spots. Exposing that golden colored uh, gradient underneath and you get a, uh, a time ring or whatever you call this outline. You get the pretty much the finished product of what you want that to look like. And there it is. Now that is something I now import into either PowerPoint or Publisher, uh, Microsoft program, because I find it easier to uh, move numerals around. You can also print numerals in any font you want. These are numerals that I happen to have actually drawn for this particular face. You can see the 11, the 12, and the 1, and the 7, the 6, and the 5 are one size. The 3 and the 9 are a little bit larger and the 10, 2, 4, and 8 are somewhere in between. Again, this is all up to you. You just place them to be aesthetically pleasing to your eye to work well with the shape of the face. These are some uh, Art Deco uh, frills or decorations that I put in the corners just to, just to sort of dress the clock up. Those are something else that I've just drawn I've drawn in, uh, in this case, I drew the outlines in AutoCAD and colored them in PowerPoint. Add a logo, add some hands just for you to look at. Uh, obviously, those hands are going to be added later. Then often, I'll also take that same ring that I made for the outside edge of the clock and uh, shrink it and put it somewhere inside the clock. I think it just adds a little decoration Looks like I've got to move that logo a little bit. Sometimes I will color that inner ring uh, white instead of black. I think you'll see that on the finished clock, it's white. And so there is that clock face built uh, using SketchUp and in this case, PowerPoint. Here's that same clock face in a horizontal setting. I'm doing some last minute tweaks here. I wanted to just rearrange those numbers just a little bit. And there's the finished product, and here it is on the clock. And you see that it's, I think, it's aesthetically right for the shape and style of the clock, and the colors are right. Hope you've enjoyed this video. If that's the case, please subscribe, and thank you for watching.